Welp, here we are. Somehow we made it to week 13. I don't know how we made it. I'm, I'm a little sad. We made it all the way to week 13, but we got we got a lot of college football to digest over the next over the next three or so days. We're gonna have a smorgasbord of college football to digest and get on over with because I mean my goodness we got we got all sorts of goodies you know to digest to not digest I need to find a better word to digest but you get what I mean you know it's rivalry week you know heat rivals are going up against each other conference titles need to be determined bowling needs to be determined you know we still have nine teams that you know, out of the 80 something slots, 84 slots available, we still need nine more bowling teams. So, some of these teams in these top 25 matchups could be going bowling, you know, because there are some top 25 games involving, you know, some six, you know, some five, six win teams, you know, that, you know, could determine, hey, this team could be going bowling. And then there are some others that are going to determine conference title races, as we all know. And then some will determine who will be those final four teams, those four best and deserving teams to go to the college football playoff. But the drama on that can take a back seat for just a little bit. Because first things first, the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night. A game that does not really matter anymore due to Ole Miss just completely messing things up. They have fallen to number 20. Yes, I'm making this like about 45 minutes after the CFP rankings were revealed. Pretty much everything I need for this week has already been taken care of, so I got my notes and stuff ready. But the big question, Lane Kiffin, is he going to go anywhere? A lot of people are saying, hey, Lane Kiffin to Auburn. Lane Kiffin's denying it. But we don't know. Um, Ole Miss has just been on a downward spiral. They've lost, you know, three big games the last few weeks, and it's just has been good. You know, Mike Leach wants to give the Rebels one more loss, and you know they might be able to do it. Mississippi State is no easy slouch here. But Thursday, you really don't have to. You, you really shouldn't care for that game at all. It's it's a nothing burger, aside from the Lane Kiffin controversy. You know, same old, same old stuff. But Black Friday gives us multiple interesting games in the early window. So the first one is that number 19 Tulane, number 24 Cincinnati game. The winner. They will go on to host the AAC Championship, and the loser will need some help to get a rematch between these two teams in the next week. This is a Bearcats defense that is unreal. They've been playing fights out this year, and, you know, Ben Bryan and company have been just, they've been cruising along the offense. They've been doing okay. It's nothing special. And, of course, you got the Green Wave offense, Ty J. Spears, Michael Pratt. I mean, that duo right there is lethal. One hell of a game we're going to get on Black Friday. Finally, an AAC game that's on ABC. You know, it's not the Navy. That's not, you know, like, you know, Navy because of, you know, contracts and stuff like that. But we haven't had an AAC game on ABC all year long for some reason. And there should have been at least one already. But this is, this is a big one right here that needs to be on the national stage. Another game that's important is indeed my Texas Longhorns at number 23. Four-loss team really shouldn't be ranked, but who else are you going to put in there? I mean, there are other teams that should be in there, but they're not in there because the committee said, nah, we're not doing that. They're taking on a Baylor team that played very well against TCU, but they're disappointed in how that game ended. Blake Shapin and crew need to play like they did against TCU. We all know B. John Robinson. Honestly, send B. John to New York. Send him to New York, too. If you're going to send Blake Corm to New York, then you better send 
B. John Robinson in New York. This man has been rumbling pretty much all season long. Yeah, there was anomalies like TCU game, you know. But this man continues to rumble all over Big 12 defenses. And the Horns still have an opportunity to go to the Big 12 championship. They still have an opportunity. This game is important because, you know, the Horns need to win to go to the Big 12 championship. And they need a, and they need some help. But we'll talk about that other game. In a moment. Excuse me. NC State has finally fallen out the rankings as they should have. And North Carolina stuck at number 17. And we know the Qatar Hills will be in the ACC championship taking on Clemson. And you gotta be feel for Drake May and crew. They gotta be angry after losing against GT. You know. The Wolfpack, on the other hand, they just been atrocious on offense lately. I get it, no Devin Leary, but I mean, the se again, like I've said, the season pretty much came to an end when they lost to Clemson. And the defense, they've sputtered a little bit. You know, not the same defense that the Wolfpack had, you know, early in the season. The, end, the grind of the regular season has gotten to some of these teams. And NC State is another unfortunate victim of that. UCLA drop down to number 18 they're gonna take on Cal and Cal is terrible you know like the Bruins they can't do anything as far as the Pac-12 you know them going to the Pac-12 title game and going but there is a scenario that helps out some teams they lose but I don't think they're gonna lose this game because I mean DTR and company are just on another level of offense I mean we've seen this UCLA team play we've seen them you know, do the good things, and they're gonna finish with nine wins. I think they're gonna finish with nine wins to close the regular season, at least. Speaking of another team that might finish with with nine wins, or at least the team that I think is gonna finish with nine wins, Florida State taking on Florida. I mean, the Knowles, led by Jordan Travis, Mike Norvell's improved this team so much. You know, like, this is a Florida team that just lost to Vandy in a humiliating fashion. You know, I think Florida State will take care of business here. Florida is just just not very good. Just not a good team at all, man. Definitely a disappointing one. And then Saturday. Oh, boy. The game. Number three, Michigan. Number two, Ohio State. The winner will go to the Big Ten Championship. They'll be taking on somebody for the Big Ten West. It'll either be Illinois, Iowa, or Purdue. And, you know, J.J. McCarthy, the Wolverines, are going to go to Columbus. They're going to take on C.J. Stroud and the Buckeyes. And both teams struggled with injuries throughout the season. You know, you've had Jackson Smith and Jigba, you know, who's been injured. Blake Corum injured. You know, Blake Corum being the biggest question coming into this week is he going to play or not you know this is two teams that have struggled you know in several ways you know the injuries have hampered both teams but it's also the passing games for different reasons um, Ohio State for whatever reason can't defend the pass and this has been a thing you know remember just because Sean Clifford threw like four interceptions in that game against Ohio State did not mean and this this was something I should have realized a little bit sooner you know that Ohio State's pass defense isn't up to snuff and they really got you know they really got blasted by Maryland last week in the pass game too and Michigan Michigan's problem is they can't pass again the offense runs through Blake Corum and this has been a problem that has come up time and time again under Jim Harbaugh J.J. McCarthy has to pass. We've seen this man, you know, just throw some stinkers. And I, I really should have realized a little bit more that, you know, McCarthy's not really the guy. You know, he's, he's just a game manager. C.J. Stroud hasn't played the greatest this year, which is why I don't think he should win the Heisman again. The Heisman is Heisman should go to somebody out west. Or Drake May. But, you know, again, it's been a weird year for the Heisman, so, you know, if C.J. Stroud wins the Heisman, I, I really, I'm really just going to call the legitimacy of the award in question already. 
I, I called it into question last year when Bryce Young won it because I didn't think Bryce Young should have won the award. I really didn't. As, you know, C.J. Stroud has to have the game of his life because Michigan is a tough team. Ohio State is a tough team, so J.J. McCarthy has to have the time of his life. You know, the injuries, whoever's going to be banged up less is going to win this game. There's also South Carolina taking on Clemson. We wonder, can Spencer Rattler and the Cox do it again? This is a Clemson team that's ranked behind Alabama, but Clemson has way more opportunities than Alabama does to go to the CFP. And Davo Swinney and company, you know, again, not in the greatest position to go to the playoffs, but this is a strong Clemson team, you know, on defense especially. Sure. They got bullied in the run game against Notre Dame. You know, they've been bullied, you know, at times in the run game. Florida State comes to mind, uh, you know. But, you know, for the most part, Clemson has been able to, you know, go to the season relatively unscathed with just one loss. Again, a bad loss to Notre Dame, but it's still just one loss. And they're still in this thing. Georgia Tech, on the other hand, they're taking on the number one team in the country, Georgia. Um, the Yellow Jackets, they want to become bowl eligible, but they have to take on Stetson Bennett and that dog's defense. And Georgia, I think, regardless of what happens, you know, there is a scenario where I think Georgia will get left out, but this is like a nightmare scenario that involves them losing to Georgia Tech first. And then lose the LSU. You know, again, I just I just don't see it. I think Georgia, you know, their defense is too strong for the old Georgia Tech. This isn't North Carolina. This is this is the number one team, the defending champs. I, I don't see it. There's an afternoon slate, and it's a good one. You know, you have the questionable ACC team of the week being ranked, which is Louisville. Don't know why they're ranked. They're ranked, and they have a top 25 win, by the way, in UCF. And it helps Clemson out, but that's about it. Malik Cunningham, his status is up in the air. And my biggest question is on Will Levis. Is he an NFL caliber quarterback? I just don't see it. I'm sorry, guys. I have not seen it all season long. I just don't. I just don't see it. I really don't. I, I, I question it. I've been questioning it for weeks now. I questioned it against Georgia, and he couldn't do anything there, you know, because Georgia's built like an NFL defense, and I just don't. I just don't see it. Like, like this is a problem the NFL has he, with drafting quarterbacks that are clearly not ready, but they do it anyway, and I just don't see it. I don't see Levis being that type of guy yet. Like, we have way too many quarterbacks in the NFL that cannot play quarterback. And I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I don't see it. You can hate me all you want, but I don't see it. And then there's the game that's formerly known as the Civil War. Number 9, Oregon. Number 21, Oregon State. Oregon, all they need to do is win this game, and they're in the Pac-12 championship. Bo Nix playing lights out this year. Again, I think the highest one is going to come from either him or from another, um, you know, Pac-12 quarterback. All they, again, all Oregon needs to do is just win this game, and they are in. If they lose, that sets up that sets up a couple other teams, and we'll talk about those other teams in a moment. You have Jonathan Smith and the Beebs, three-loss Oregon State team that they're tough out. This is a tough. This is going to be a tough game, a grinder. You know, definitely one to watch. I cannot wait for this man. Definitely the game of the afternoon. Definitely keep your eyes on Oregon, Oregon State. Auburn trying to become bowl eligible under Cadillac Williams. It's going to be hilarious, though. Again, the coaching search has been, you know, kind of weird. And then you have Bryce Young in the tide. They just want to get the 10 wins and end their season on a high note because, again, Alabama, their seat, this is pretty much their ceiling right here at number seven. They're not especially with Tennessee losing. They're not in a position 
to go to the college football playoff. I'm sorry. They're not. This is not a playoff caliber team. And this is, again, you know, going to 12, we would be seeing this team, you know, in a 12-team playoff, and I do not want to see that. I really don't. It's gross. You know, like, Alabama's just not that good this year. Again, the two losses they have, you know, and really they should have lost more games, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. You know, Alabama, all they got to do is just win. You know, they'll be in a good bowl. They'll be in a nice, comfortable New Year's Six Bowl, and, you know, things will be fine for them. Iowa State TCU was a different story, though. You know, TCU is awaiting their opponent in the Big 12 championship, but this is an Iowa State offense, you know, that is terrible. But that defense, oh, that defense, it is elite. For whatever reason, Iowa State is just, they're just on another level. They just can't score. Similar to the other team in Iowa, the Hawkeyes, they can't score. All the Horn Frogs need to do is win this game. And they are in, you know, a great position, regardless of the Big 12 title game. Max Duggan and company, they want to put on a show. They need to. You know, this is this is not 2014, in which, again, I don't think, and again, I don't know where people are coming from with the whole TC was screwed in 2014. They weren't the Big 12 champions. It was Baylor that was the Big 12 champions. The Big 12 messed up. Like, come on, stop it. But TCU, definitely on a good opportunity here. All they got to do is win. Penn State also kind of at their ceiling at number 11. Sean Clifford and company, you know, again, they want to cap off a 10-win season. The Spartans want to become bowl eligible. And after their, after their game against Indiana last week, in which Indiana completed only two passes, and Michigan State lost, uh, I wonder, what in the world are they going to do against Penn State? Uh, I, again, I don't buy Penn State. I've never bought Penn State, you know, because they lost to the only two good teams they played. You know, so they were clearly not a contender, but they can get the 10 wins. It just is what it is. I'm sorry. And then Utah, Colorado, um, the buffs are terrible. We've been over that. They lost bad against Washington last week, and they're going to lose against Utah and Cam Rising this week. They're really that bad. Utah has to have several things go their way to get to the Pac-12 title game to take on USC again. And I don't know if they're going to get that. You know, I, don't, I really don't think they're going to get it. You know, they have three losses. That's the first thing. They're ranked number 14. That's the second thing. You know... The loss against Florida looks even worse every single day. You know, I just don't see, you know, with them having two losses in the Pac-12, I, I don't see them getting in. But again, it, a weird tiebreaker scenario because the Pac-12 disregarded divisions in one of the dumbest decisions I think I've seen this offseason. You know, because now you mess things up. You know, clearly it would be... You know, it'd still be a little weird in regards to, you know, the Pac-12, you know, but I think it would be, you know, more appropriate that Utah's basically eliminated from the Pac-12 race. But again, who knows? And then this evening's slate is something, you know. LSU is number five, and they're, they got Jaden Daniels and company just try to get the 10 wins taking on a Texas A&M team led by Jimbo Fisher who just has all sorts of problems no bowl game for him you know you know no no way to get out of Jimbo Fisher's contract at all it, it's it's been rough for A&M and that's that's just how it is for him you know LSU all they have to do is win this game against a Pretty, pretty rough A&M team to get to the SEC championship with 10 wins. That's all they need to do. And then, if they could do that and beat Georgia, they are in, regardless of what USC does. UCF, you know, they are in a position, you know, 
to where they can go to the AAC Championship regardless. Now, um, it's a bit weird because, again, the AAC's tiebreakers are weird, just like the Pac-12's. All Gus Malzahn and the Knights need to do is win this game. They are probably going on the road regardless. <laughs> but they just need to take care of business. The Bulls are terrible. Like, absolutely terrible. So they should take care of business here. And then number 10, Tennessee. You know, again, the loss to South Carolina was pretty bad for them. Hendon Hooker, out for the year. He's going to the NFL probably. You know, that ACL got torn, unfortunately. So it's Joe Milton. And the balls, they want to get the 10 wins before whatever bowl game they get. I think they will get a New Year's Six game. But Vanderbilt is knocking on the door of six wins and wanting to go bowling. And this presents a problem. You know, because Tennessee, while they're still potent, you know, Vanderbilt Vanderbilt has has been a much more interesting team this year than I think a lot of us wanted to admit, you know. So it's gonna be interesting to see the will Vandy go bowling. And then the game of the week. Oh boy. Back in the Pac twelve to talk about another game of the week type material game in which Notre Dame takes on USC and Caleb Williams he is the guy that not only can get USC to the playoff he's going he is pretty much I think this man will win the highest but regardless you know and this is a USC team that has to face one of the most elite defenses in college football. I've said this all year that Notre Dame's defense is elite. And this Notre Dame run game has been built different. Drew Pine hasn't had to do too much since he became starter, but there have been times where this man has excelled. And this is another opportunity for them to excel. Notre Dame, you know, at number 15 in the country you know is something else already with the three losses they have and now one more big game for Notre Dame before you know a bowl game you know inconceivable that this Notre Dame team was going to be you know in this position where they can not only end one team's hopes to the college football playoff but also another USC again if they get to 12 and 1, they are in. But they got to get past Notre Dame first. They are in the Pac 12 championship. They got to get past Notre Dame. It's not going to be easy. Don't say it will be because it, it's, it's not. This defense is on another level. I've been saying that. I'll continue to say it until USC beats them. And again, I, I harken back to the Oregon State game in which USC got pretty much held to like less than 30 points. It's not going to be easy. Not going to be easy at all. There's also Kansas and Kansas State. Another highlighted game for me. Definitely important because, you know, the Big 12 race isn't locked up yet. You know, you have Deuce Vaughn, Will Howard, and the Wildcats. Hopefully they can. It, are they going to be able to finally lock up a Big 12 championship spot? They got to beat their arch rival. You know, Jalen Daniels is back, and we all know there's a good running back in the backfield by the name of Devin Neal, and that wide receiver game is on point for Kansas. K State has the edge in the run game, and I think that might be the difference against Kansas's defense because again. B. John ran for over 200 yards against them last week. And also, you know, Kansas' defense has just been giving up lots of yards against the run. But, but, K-State's defense can also give up points and yards in bunches. So that is also a problem for Kansas State. That is a problem for them. They play some elite defense at times, but other times it's been like, 
what in the world is wrong with this defense? Like, you don't allow West Virginia to score 19 points like that. So it's it's weird stuff like this, you know, where Kansas State is in a weird position where I think they're good, but I think they are the number 12 team in the country. But at the same time, I don't think so because of things like this in which they can give up yards and points at a scary, scary rate. And then the Pac-12 after dark game is Washington, Washington State, the Apple Cup. It's going to be Michael Pinnix and Cam Ward. You know, again, the Huskies need a lot of things to go their way. And if it were, you know, like the regular Pac-12 divisions, like the, the North and the South, then Washington would have a little bit more leeway to get to the Pac-12 championship because all they would need would, would be to win and to lose to Oregon. But instead, or rather, Oregon to lose, them to win. But instead, they have to rely on UCLA, Oregon State, and Colorado. So it's just a lot of things that I don't think is going to happen. I'm sorry. I think this team can get the 10 wins, though. But it's going to be a tough one against Washington State because Washington State is a tough out. Cam Ward has been playing pretty good football all season. Washington State's been playing pretty good defense. They have a pretty good offense again. It's going to be tough. Going to be a tough one. You know, I thought there were going to be some other five teams ranked. Just so you know. But they weren't ranked. Coastal Carolina should have been ranked. Maybe UTSA should have been ranked. I don't think UCF or Texas or Louisville should be ranked at this point. But it is what it is. You know, they're going to, the CFP is going to rank Texas regardless, you know. At this point, like the polls are going to rank Texas regardless at this point. Like, I don't know why, but they are. So, you know, the conference championships are a little bit less cut and dry right now because of how things are working out. Again, teams, conferences starting to go with the divisionless model or, you know, things are getting weird. Like the AAC, weird scenarios. It's a little bit more clear clear cut but it's still kind of weird because Houston's also a factor in there but they're not ranked so you know it's all kind of moot then you have the Pac-12 if the Pac-12 had divisions it'd be a lot more simple because Utah would kind of be out of the equation but instead they're not you know and you know also or rather no actually no it'd be weird it would be very, very weird, but I don't know. I don't know. It's still kind of weird as in regards to, you know, how the Pac-12 does it. The Big Ten, the East is simple. The West is not. Not simple at all. Thank goodness for the Big 12 at the ACC and the SEC, though, because those three are very cut and dry, very easy. Two of them are already determined. Half of the Big 12 is determined. It's just this week that needs to be resolved so if we still have seven teams in the hunt for the college football playoff do not let Alabama being right number seven fool you they are out of the discussion especially with Tennessee losing and them falling they are out of discussion they don't have any more games after the Auburn game they're done the other seven teams do and potentially Oregon although I think they have less of a chance than LSU does as a two-loss team. So, you know, things are coming to a head, and we have a whole lot of nonsense. We have a whole lot of nonsense in these last two weeks of the season. But this rivalry week is going to be something I cannot wait for at all, and I wonder what y'all think. I think I posed the question in the community poll, in the community tab, but who knows? Who knows what it's like? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be something, but we'll figure it out as time goes along. Until you know, until Saturday. Well, not Saturday. Sunday. Because of the patch well after dark, 
I'll see you on Sunday at like 2 a.m. <laughs> see you, everybody.